are not taking a look at the illegal unlicensed Mario's ice cream truck. Instead, we are taking a look at what is one of the, well, the single best-selling name in diesel pushers, the Newmar Dutch Star. Now, I know my way around these a little bit, but I want to make sure I was doing you folks justice. So I called in the expert here. This is Mr. Chris Chopa. He's one of our uh, RV outfitters here in Junction City. And I tell you what, if you want somebody to make your head spin, this is the guy that can do it. But what we're looking at here, this uh, this, this is such a treat to go through. I, I don't dislike the normal towable RVs that you see most of on this channel, but oh my Lord, this thing, uh, luxury supreme. Uh, you know, full tile floor all the way through this thing, including a tiled flush floor slide out. And we're gonna discuss all on how they make that possible because Numar requires a lot of special engineering to put into this, like the whole house rides on a, a truly different foundation from what you find in a conventional class A. Um, we have a triple slide, which sounds kind of, uh, you know, like we're shortchanging it, but that's because on the driver's side, this thing has a full wall mega slide that just, it opens up every room in this. Whether you're in that just giant expansive living room and kitchen, or uh, your, your big walk through middle master suite on your way back to your full private rear bathroom because you have a guest half bath on the way for everyone else to wash their hands so they can stay away from your underwear, you know? Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, you know, dishwasher capable, washer dryer capable. The only thing it's not capable of is um, blending into a crowd because this thing stands out like crazy. But the thing is what really impressed me most about this, uh, a little spin around the yard, the Comfort Plus steering system and uh, the, the passive assist steering system on this makes this one of the most drivable big 40 foot rigs I think I've ever seen. And that's the thing. I can show you all this at the end of the day. It's like trying on a pair of pants. You got to come out here. You got to call a guy like Chris. You, you have to drive one of these because driving is truly believing on one of these. Now, there are a couple little things we found on this one that we don't totally completely love. So we're going to make sure that we're still shooting you straight. But overall, <laughs> there's a lot to like on here. Let us know what you think. Now, the, the first thing that struck me when I stepped inside here is just the grandeur of it all. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it's it's not the stapled fastener cabinet uh, stick and tin travel trailer that I spend most of my time hanging around in. And, it's, and, and frankly, that is truly my personal speed. But this is something, even if it's just to come see one, you have to come see one of these at some point. Everything in this is a cut above. So our ceiling is at least, if not uh, over seven foot tall. And um, you've got dual 15,000 BTU air conditioners on this. Now, when you get up to your 43 foot Dutch stars, you can actually option on a third. But that means that we have a 30,000 BTU uh, air conditioning system, plus of course the dash air. Now, uh, when it comes to heating, that is one of the more amazing things on this one. Um, it, it has a hydronic heating system that basically cranks out about 50,000 BTUs of power. And we're going to get to all that. But first, one of the things that you know I love to do, I love to blast the, uh, the horns on these motorhomes right here. Hey, Josh, can I do the honors? Yes. No, absolutely. Yes. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, if... If I was sleeping in the morning and somebody blasted that thing, I wouldn't have to go to the bathroom. I will have already gone to the bathroom. That will wake you up. Oh my gosh. Is there just like a little beep beep, hey Karen horn or anything on this? Or is it only just the, I'm going to scare the pants off your horn? Oh no, no. We have the post 10 PM horn for all the campgrounds. So you pick that bad boy off and someone just happens to go by. Okay. But yeah, that's like the, Hey Karen, how's the groceries? That's, that's, that's definitely much better. Now, um, Mr. Chris, can you kind of give us uh, a little bit of the overview of the cockpit? Because it looks like you got to be an F1 fighter jet pilot to sort of navigate your way around. What is all this stuff? So you have all your visor controls, your pedal controls, uh, everything electronic here, front uh, shade that drops down, your side visor shades on both sides, everything's electric. And the panel up front here will, will ride through. So pedals to visors, to shades, to docking lights, to your AC controls, to your generator control. Everything is centrally located in the one area. I'm noticing too, the stuff that's more driver centric is nearest the driver. I mean, it, it sounds right. silly to think of that, but somebody thought of that. Like there was brains put into this thing here. You got it, absolutely. <laughs> I'd like to believe that at least. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if not, at least they got luck. Is that a wireless phone charge pad? It is. Nice. I tell you, I've, I've become a, a a junkie for that kind of stuff here. Obviously, air brake system. And if I'm not, what what variety of Allison transmission do we have over here? This is an Allison 3000. Nice. Yeah, the control panel for that is still on the left on the Spartan chassis. 
It was freight, the reason I make that point is Freightliner has shifted over to um, having your shifter under the steering wheel on the right. So Spartan chassis, you're good to go the uh, traditional style on the left. And what was that panel just behind that? Was that your leveling control? It is, the HWH computerized leveling. Okay, so is that uh, hydraulic? Is that electric? It is all electric, a hydraulic leveling system. It's computerized, so it's electrically driven, but it is a hydraulic uh, leveling jack system. On the so, okay, that, the reason I was wondering is I think that on a big rig like this, you want that hydraulic for the, the extra stability you're going to get, right? Absolutely. Now, um, are these, these look like multi-direction power captain's chairs here? They are. Yeah, they're six-way power seats, both of them. Both of them electrically driven, and they do fully turn around in a 360 to uh, face everyone else on the coach. Well, dude, you know what this means? Staring contest. I always lose. Hats off, D. Chris. You won that one. Anyway, like I said, these seats can flip back around. The, the co-pilot seat has this cool little, uh, you know, swing up little desk station right here. So you got a little place to eat your Baconator going down the road or, you know, do a little, uh, I almost said MapQuest. When's the last time anybody used MapQuest? Is MapQuest still a thing, Chris? I still use it. <laughs> <laughs> now, real quick note for you, on camera, uh, digital cameras are a little bit funky. That light was kind of flickering. As I get closer, it's not doing that. That's just the way the camera is trying to light filter stuff. So it's not like this thing has a crazy electrical issue. But if it did, this is where you'd start looking at it because this is basically the whole house command center right here. It exists above the uh, the driver's area. Um, effectively, like all of your main systems uh, happen in here. So whether you know it's your holding tanks, your your auto gen start, your HVAC. Your, uh, your 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 cool Gerard awnings that we're going to take a look at when we go outside, or your hydronic uh, heating system. All that stuff is up here. But what I like about it is, let's say you got a trip with some guests or a little kid who's got curious fingers, because when I was a kid, I burned up my grandfather's water heater trying to figure out what the red switch did, and he didn't uh, know I had done that. You know, sometimes it's nice to keep things away from the littles. Something else that's really cool on these, they put outlets all over the place. They run a ton of copper in this. And these can be inverted when you're going down the road. So these can be live powered outlets. But notice it's household and USB plugs all over the place. And even the co-pilot gets a really cool little wireless charge pad here to keep them up and running. Now, I have noticed one major defect in this RV. And actually, if you look in that mirror over there, you can see him pointing at us right now. Uh, it's just like everywhere I go, this guy's looking at me because there's mirrors all over the place. It's like a fun house in here. Um, but I mean, even the, the floor. So this is an all, what, what variety of tile is this, Chris? Porcelain tile. This is all porcelain tile. But what's wild about this is that it, it persists even all the way through the slide. And if you notice, um, can you try to rock around on that chair, Chris? You notice how you don't have to put like a, a, a book of matches or something under it or a post-it note to try to keep it flat. It is a rarity in the RV, a truly flush floor slide. Now, one of the other cool things here, um, that table can extend, can it not? Sure can. Yeah, uh, and it comes with a pair of fold-away guest chairs. That's why in the towable side of things, I often refer to it as a diesel pusher dinette, because <laughs> where do you think they got the idea from? Now, um, the uh, again, this all the way back uh, to that, that rear master bedroom, all the way down past Chris, all the way over to these dual recliners. It is one full wall mega slide, basically. But it's all hardwood. Everything in this is hardwood. There, there's no like secondary scrap material used in this. You see the LED inlays inset into that. Um, the uh, you know even hardwood crown molding above that in the uh, the main ceiling cavity, as it were. This is one of those coaches you just, you have to really see. Now, one of the things I really focus on uh, is, you know, seatbelt safety when you're going down the road. And one of the things I really appreciate that Newmar points out with a little warning sticker between these two awesome recliners is that these are not to be occupied in motion. That's one of the only things in this RV you can't really shouldn't be using when you're moving because they, they wiggle, they move, they're free float. And if you wanted to take those out and put your own lazy boy in, absolutely nothing is stopping you from doing that. Um, I could, heck, I could see somebody maybe removing that little center stand there, putting their own custom theater in. But I'm telling you, when you get in this, when you sit down, experience this furniture, I don't think you're going to want to mess around with anything. Um, 
Can you pull one of those shades down over there, Mr. Chris? Because one of the cool things on this, it's all uh, hardwood uh, boxing and balances, and you're staring at me. Is there, a, is there a special way to bring these down that I'm not aware of? Well, you even almost caught me off guard, because on some of the other diesel trim level lines, they are manual. But on the Ventana and up, but we're in Dutch Star, they're electric. So there's two remote controls that come with this coach oh. to actually control the up lines. That's, so I could literally be sitting over here on this sofa. I could have a glare coming in in the afternoon and I can remote control that shade down. I don't even got to get off my fat backside. You got it, exactly. Sold. Sign me up. Here's my credit. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> but uh, you get the idea. Like, it's just it's just glorious all the way through. Now, um, as we uh, wrap our way around over here, we've talked a lot about the big kitchen, the cockpit space, but we have an opposing super slide across from the mega slide, basically. Uh, that composes the uh, this right here. Is this a hide bed Mr. Chris? So although that uh, about 95% of the features on this coach are very, very reliable, this sleeper sofa is definitely not one of my favorites. It, it is a trifold sleeper. sleeper. Um, however, the process to unfold this, like me and Josh just learned when we set this up, can be convoluted and tough sometimes, especially with the legs bend in and the process of pulling out the actual mattress. So if you guys are going to set this up, Definitely do this with somebody and learn exactly how to do it so you don't tear something on the fabric. Uh, the process may change in the future for Newmar. They may end up changing the life cycle again because this is about the third one I've seen in the process of a couple of years. Awesome. Now, behind us, we're, uh, we're watching National Geographic, obviously. You know? It's like in stunning life like 3D out there. What if I feel like, you know, catching on my Netflix? Well, the televator access right in front of us is on the button right behind us. So you just tap, oh, look at that. I love this slow rise, it's so dramatic. It needs to come with its own theme song. Like it has to come with the final countdown. Look at that thing. I, You know what, that's just cool. It's just auto magical. Anyway, now uh, kind of kick Mr. Chris out of his chair over here, giving you a look at that no neck wrecker entertainment center on the corner of Boardwalk and Park Place around this thing. So, you know, it is kind of nice where you have your choice are you watching TV or are you, uh, you know, watching nature, looking out at your campsite? Because that's the thing. This RV has some excellent window coverage on both sides, but especially the uh, the campsite here. Now, there is actually um, three different uh, decors you can select. So, like, uh, this is the uh, the lighter wood. I believe the wood tone's called Glacier, something like that. There are, uh, you know, some different color options if this jelly ain't quite your jam. Now, uh, we've had a good look at everything, but one of the things that I want to do is really crack everything open and showcase all the storage for you. And kind of like Steven Tyler, I don't want to miss a thing, but I'm not going to try to hit the Steven Tyler shut the car tones today. Maybe another day, but not today. Oh, I like that. I love that little cup holder slot right there. It, you know, that's just, it didn't have to do that. That's just a cool thing. I like cool things. Now, this is all true hardwood uh, construction, just like you have all hardwood fascia everywhere, all hardwood doors. You see the metallic struts and the hidden hinges giving you a double whammy for uh, strength and support, keeping this uh, all open. Over here, we have an 18 cubic foot uh, residential refrigerator. So if this slide is out and you are in that screaming hot Arizona sun, between the insulation package on this and the fast cooling nature of that refrigerator, it's gonna keep up just fine. But the good news just keeps on coming. When we come over here into like the actual kitchen or galley, as it were, when we get into an RV, it's a galley, you see that, you know, we actually, uh, it, it just everything opens up. And I love it when storage comes out to us. I will say, like, I can appreciate the fact they gave us two spots for small trash cans. But small trash cans just kind of feel a little bit underwhelming to me in this one. Actually, Chris and I were discussing that earlier. That's something he really brought to my attention. Um, so definitely all the credit in the world on that one goes to Chris. I, I, I think I agree. That makes sense. Of course, giant convection residential uh, microwave over here. And even, you know, storage all the way across above the entertainment center. But one of the things that I, I discovered, I accidentally, I was like, hey, what's this button do? Check this thing out. It has an extension for the, the kitchen counter, which also has full extension drawers, which if you're noticing, basically, it, it, you can almost cut off the entire RV with the kitchen 
and the drawers. But there's also a very cool, very special thing happening over here in your uh, your cooktop area that I'd like the expert to maybe weigh in on. So what's nifty about this counter space that we have here is that, you know, if you're a takeout person, clearly you have a lot of solid surface counter space. But if you do like to cook in RV, I like to cook inside of motorhomes, these solid surface countertop slash cutting boards are removable. So once you remove these cutting boards, the true induction cooktop, which is all electric, this is an all electric coach, there's no propane on board, is removable. So if someone's still sleeping and they're maybe, you know, cooking bacon, Josh, something of that nature, they can take this outside and go hook it up downstairs at one of those 110s. Makes it that easy and that accessible to go cook outside if you need to. So a lot of folks, they like to use these as the storage. You know, I get it. You know, this is, they're pretty deep sized uh, pull-out drawers. Lots of space to put different utensils and things. However, some people do like the clean storage, AKA dishwashers. So the dishwasher actually goes in this location of the coach. It is plumbed for it already. So if that is an option you did want to add at a later date, uh, Bish's RV can do that for you. I told you guys, Chris knows his stuff. He knows his stuff very well. He has been making my head spin. And every time I think I got kind of a, a beat on this, he, he gives me some other nugget that just flat blows my mind. Um, now, right over here, you have something, you have a central vacuum system. That's great. But you have one of my favorite features for keeping an RV clean, and that's what I call the electric dustpan. That black rectangle down there, you can just sweep everything over to it, toe kick it up, and it will just suck that thing right up, all the garbage, because a manual dustpan, have you ever noticed how it just stops working? And if you ever wanted to, you know, see how much space is around one of these, it's a little, it's a little tight, you know, but at the same time, um, you know, for, for lack of a better way to phrase it, do you feel there's enough room beside you to utilize the butt napkins, my friend? I mean, as, as a guy that enjoys his time when I go to the bathroom to not be bothered, <laughs> I have plenty of space in here to read my magazine and uh, shut the door. <laughs> Slide that back open for me, buddy. Because up top here, a lot of storage space and one of the, uh, you know, of course, big XL vent fans here to keep airflow moving whenever you happen to need it. Now, I think I heard you say something earlier. This vessel style sink over here, that's an option that's been applied to this coach, correct? Correct. Awesome. And it's, I mean, you know, solid surface everywhere, tile everywhere. Man, you know what? The biggest danger that you would have in this coach, I think, um, other than other people rubbernecking at the campsites once you're parked, I think the biggest danger I'd have to worry about in this rig is if my wife swiffered the floor and I'm walking around in socks, I'm probably going to take a heck of a tumble and I'm, I'm going to end up crashing all over the place on this thing. Now, like I said, there's, I, I normally like to pretend I'm Count Dracula, like I'm a vampire. I like to hide somewhere where people can't see me. But with all the mirrors in this thing, I just, I flat gave that up. There was no way for me to do that. Now remember, I keep calling this a mega slide from just behind the driver's cab through the kitchen all the way back here. This is all a flush floor tiled slide. So down below, you've got dresser drawerage galoreage basically here, because again, you might spend an extended time in this. Now the one that I don't have flipped down, um, it's on like a little like drawbridge style chain. That's actually where all your like say DVD hookups and stuff like that's going to be. You've got that, uh, you know, evening TV. It's on a little bit of a downward dog angle, so you're not quite neck wrecking yourself, uh, you know, here in your beautiful pusher. And as you can see, you've obviously got that mine and yours kind of cabinet storage. Now, the rear master bath on this thing is just, it's a masterpiece. Um, I, 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 you, could, you could just hang out back here and read a book, and it would not be a wasted afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm not really sure. It, actually, it's kind of an odd shape for me. I don't know how I'm exactly going to go about this, but did you notice something interesting? The ceiling just changed from a linear interior profile to a radius interior profile. And the reason is we're now basically, uh, you know, above your motor and a lot of hardware. So there is a little bit of a step up right there. That's one little caution I just want to give you, let you know that's there. But since this raised up, they wanted to make sure that they also raised the ceiling accordingly. And, uh, you know, giving you plenty of headroom in the shower here, uh, as you can see by my little, you know, goofy face and interaction. Um, kind of, you know, peeking around the corner a little bit, give you a more direct view of it. Again, it's more of that rain style shower head, but you do have like a more personal wand thing that you can utilize there. That's a 300 pound rated teak seat that can fold down if you need it, but it's a nice size uh, shower. I haven't hard measured it, but it looks like it's about three feet by just shy of three feet. So there's there's plenty of foot in there. Uh, plenty of foot. Yeah, well, I guess, you know, it depends. If you put your foot in there, there's probably going to be plenty of foot in there. This to me is very interesting though, 
Because instead of just a fire escape window, what they actually created over here is a true fire escape door. Now, the way this works is there's actually a fold down ladder hidden inside of the door, but instead of a window that you'd have to, they're like, well, you should go out at feet first. Good luck getting your feet up that high. I don't know about you. I, I ain't no Jackie Chan. I, I am not that flexible. Never have I been in my life, but I can open a door and I can hop out of this thing and I got a ladder there. I hope, well, it's like cough medicine. I hope you never need it, but if you need it, I'm glad you got it. That kind of thing right there. And there's just phenomenal storage in this bath area. Now we gotta get awful up close and personal to this, but one of the things I like, the, the cabinet above the toilet is actually deep enough to put folded towels in there. You don't have to roll them up Taco Bell burrito style on this. And if there's ever been lipid storage, storage galore, that is this thing right here. Similar to that towel cabinet, this is exceptionally deep. And one of the things I like about that is if you want to use it uh, like it, as storage for like uh, a blow dryer or you know a shaver or something like that, there's actually room in there to be able to do that. Again, all solid surface counters all over the place, and I am so happy they went with a single sink. So many manufacturers will try to jazz something up by putting a double sink into it, but you can't really effectively operate with two people in this bathroom right here. This it, it's a it's a one butt vanity, folks. That's that, I think that's the best way I can describe it. Now, to the right of all that, the entire wall over here is also storage. You see there's additional personal hanging space. There's also uh, an interesting little kind of trunk storage area down there, which looks like it has a finger bowl. I'm guessing that's going to be an access panel to something electrical. One of the neat little hidden secrets on this, although, you know, hey, don't tell anybody. It's not like it's going to go out on the internet or anything. It does have a little programmable personal code safe back there, which I think is kind of cool. It's a little tricky to reach, but at the same time, you don't exactly want to make uh, hidden personal uh, effects a very common knowledge object, now do you? Now, something Mr. Chris was kind enough to remind, uh, remind me of a second ago, all these drawers that we're seeing are soft clothes. Like, I've been experiencing that as I go through the RV, but I kind of failed to relay that. And over here, I'm sure you've guessed, this is either just tons of storage, or you could remove the shelves for a huge closet space, or it is all set, prepped, and ready for either a combo or a stackable washer dryer. All right, Chris. You hear that? Hear what? Exactly. We have the lawnmower and crew right outside. I mean, right outside this thing. You might have seen them zipping around in the windows as we're going. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not really, you know, I got a viewfinder that's this big. You got a, a giant jumbotron or whatever. Or you're just watching this on your phone, uh, on the toilet, uh, uh, you know, while the boss pays you to do your business. Either way, I don't care. You know, you've done it. Don't act like you haven't. Uh, it's not It's not like it's going on the internet. The, I can neither confirm nor deny it. Nice! This guy is slick, man. That I tell you, this guy's good. Anyway, my point is, there's a lawn mowing crew right next to us. It's dead silent. That is a testament to just the, the thickness and the insulation quality that you have going on this. Because it's just drowning out all the noise. You guys ever watch Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? When the ceiling's crashing in on him? Your, uh, your screen does not deceive you. The walls are closing in on us right now, folks. Um, it's probably not super recommended and approved, but this thing's, it's built in a way that it can do it. This RV has like, uh, what, uh, eight six volt AGM batteries on it. It has tons of juice available. You can close both side uh, slides simultaneously or open them both simultaneously, although again, eh, not always the most recommended thing. Now, I've been told uh, when you're walking through the narrow cavities like this in a motor coach, I should no longer refer to it as the travel trailer two-step, but rather the motorhome mambo. Um, the good news, I, I got two left feet, you know, so there's no way I'm going to get through that. But the, I mean, the fact is you can easily walk through and navigate this thing. And if you need to, you might notice our master bed remains fully accessible, fully functional. So that is a nice little overnight thing. Not every coach is going to offer that. Unless you're going to climb over the bed though, you will need to utilize our little guest half bath over here for a uh, you know, little in motion uh, kind of potty action, unless you're obviously making a travel stop. Now there's something that, you know, Chris and I could talk about, but there's nothing on camera that could possibly do it justice. It's actually two things. 
First of all is the comfort drive steering system on this, which basically there it does several things for us, but there's like a motor built into the steering column kind of that will uh, effectively always make sure that, you know, as you make a big left turn that everything gets t twisted back to zero, that everything is straight and narrow going down the road. That is also organically helping fight uh, heavy crosswinds and good Lord, look at the sun shining on it. I think that is just, that is a monstrously good looking coach. And one of the other things here is um, the uh, the type of paint they use. This is going to sound super snotty and, and hoity-toity, but it's basically the same type of paint that you find on like a Rolls Royce. Um, so if this thing, like right now, of course, brand new, it looks good. Every coach looks good brand new. Five years, 10 years, 20 years down the line, this thing's still going to look absolutely fantastic. I will say though, it is big enough that I really got to back up to try to get the whole thing in frame. Now, if you look at the very top of the coach, one of the cool things, and we'll get those open for you, this has a pair of those Girard awnings. They're like, you know, when it's all closed up, it's almost, uh, you know, seamless. There's just that tiny little gap tipping you off to them right there between the two slides. Now, also between the two slides, we have what is effectively like a 360 degree, uh, you know, observation camera security system. So this RV has more than just a rear camera, more than just side view turn signal cameras. It has a like a front camera coming off the nose, additional cameras off the side. There's like six or eight cameras total around this thing where you can actually uh, take your, your video monitor and you can actively cycle through these things, pretend you're like, <laughs> you know, a little security guard from Die Hard or something like that. Although hopefully you, uh, you, you fare better than uh, that poor fella did. Um, I have been told it is possible because they never really intended it for this purpose, but when they shift over into the 2023 season, they may actually come out with a security mode utilizing those cameras. That could be very cool. Now we got those open and right up. Mr. Chris is lending us a hand here. I want to get us a look at those awnings uh, before the, uh, the wind picks up too awful much here. But you know, even with all the baggage doors open, even with all the stuff in the way, really kind of showcases how much space we really do have available. And with the dual awning system, you're really getting maximized space. Now, as you may notice, that wind is picking up. So we are gonna take a second to get those closed back up. All right, now, it, uh, one of the cool things here though, is with the heavy gas struts, even with the wind blowing, you might've seen the, the weebles wobble, but the doors didn't slam themselves down. Uh, it's one of the nicer things I like when you start getting into a higher class coach is just the better hardware. What I will tell you, a little like serious pro tip on these doors. They have such an aggressive seal system on these that like if you try to like boot, kick and slam these suckers, they ain't gonna shut right. They're gonna bounce back open. You're gonna think this is a piece of junk. It's not, it's air pushing back at you. What you should do is compress the door. Basically uh, grab one of these doors and don't slam it shut, just press it shut. And then you're good. Then you don't have to worry about it. It will latch when you do that. Now, the sliding belly trays here, since we're a pusher, you know, we don't have a drivetrain running through like you would a gasser. The sliding belly trays are options you can apply to this. I couldn't imagine not doing it. By the way, that front compartment, that would be an amazing spot for one of those like 110 or 12 volt, like, you know, fridge, freezer, chest style things. That would be an, uh, an amazing thing there. Now, this has their uh, their star system, which I don't remember, you know, the, the exact acronym. It's strength and something robust, I don't know. Anyway, but you see this Z gusseting pattern right here? Well, take a look at this. That is the chassis rail here on the Spartan chassis. They basically build kind of like a floating floor above that. So they build a rectangular foundation, a square foundation above the chassis. So we're not being built right on this. And that organically drastically reduces the amount of road chatter that gets translated up from the wheels up into the body of the coach. That's one of the main ways that they're able to do things like put that porcelain flooring through the entire thing. Now, in case you were curious, that big giant mega slide, that is a big hydraulic slide. Uh, there's just no way any other slide system could possibly handle the weight of that. I love pegboard systems like this. This is such a smart thing because like whether you're gonna put extra little motor oils or this, that, and the other thing, you can have little hooks that go into that. It's such a cool little organizer. Now back here, this is where the passive steering system comes into place. These tires basically kind of twist a little bit when you're uh, making a sharp turn. 
And uh, this is, hold on, I think I have a good example for you around the corner here. This is about a 40 foot coach. Right over there, that is a, a coachman sports coach, a fine, fine RV in and of its own right. It's about a 42 footer. Uh, no, that's about a, that's a 40 foot model. It's, it's like the exact same size as this. This coach will turn about 18 degrees sharper. And when you are trying to navigate the sharp little twists and turns going around all the different, you know, hills and dales and valleys and campgrounds and everything, that 18 degrees could be the difference between you getting in and or out of something. Now, these are our chassis batteries. You can just flat disconnect them here and anything en engine related, hard shut down. Kind of like, you know, um, when you were younger and you'd go out and you'd try to, uh, try to court a young lady on a uh, Friday night. At least for me, most of the time, I just got hard shut down. Now, one of the really cool things that I discovered on this, Mr. Chris actually heading over to, he had to excuse himself. There was a client who was here and customers always come first. So I'm flying on my own after this, but I think I got the general idea. So this is a 450 horsepower uh, here on this uh, Spartan chassis. One of the things though, you notice how you're not looking at a rear radiator. It's like a side breather basically. And the reason that I think that's very cool God forbid this ever happens. You're going somewhere, your engine throws a belt or whatever, it's accessible. Now, I could certainly see a lot of people, myself included, I don't know that I'm really engine knowledgeable, but I know that there are plenty of intelligent people out there who are engine knowledgeable. And speaking of that engine, we talked inside how this had a hydronic heating system, basically like, you know, aqua heat. Well, it's, it's like a diesel burner system, but it has effectively like a second loop. And what I mean by that is it can actually run up through the motor. And the reason that's really critical is most of those systems are not always able to, I, I don't know if I want to say most, some of those systems are not always able to operate in transit. So this coach, more than just the dash heat, this coach can actually be fully heating with like a 50,000 BTU heat system while it's going down the road, getting to your destination. So after you've been driving all day when you're all kinds of exhausted, you don't have to uh, wait for the coach to heat up. You don't have to climb into a freezing cold bed, depending on where you park. Little details like that are a huge difference to me. And again, like I said, a little side radiator system over here. And once again, we've got a whole bunch of storage. It is under that slide though, but I mean, you know, what are you gonna do? What I like about this though, is the way that um, it's not just purely pass-through storage. It's not just, oh, we're looking at the same thing from the other side now. Like, obviously, you have your whole water docking bay. You have your power cord extension reel over here because that's a big chunk of copper. That's kind of heavy. That is that hydronic heating system, that Chinook hydronic heating system right there I just talked about. Um, like I said, I went over it very, very briefly. If you have additional questions on that, give Chris a call. I understand the general gist of it. He can explain it in more advanced ways than I can even wrap my head fully around it. I'm like, hey, dumb it down for a dummy and then dumb it down a little further. And that's going to basically be my speed right here. <laughs> now, um, right here, like we said, eight six volt AGM batteries, meaning they're, they're close to like no maintenance. They're very low maintenance batteries. That being said, a coach like this, I would definitely keep it plugged in while it's in storage. Um, I would also, a coach like this, I'd probably keep like hidden out of sight most of the time. Now over here, of course, we have all of our, you know, centralized, uh, you know, uh, bus relays, electronics, all the wiring, kind of, you know, the, the central nervous system of the RV. And in the upper right corner, you see that pull handle. That will flip up the front, uh, it's probably not the right, for lack of a better phrase, hood up here and what's kind of cool about this chris himself actually submitted this idea to uh to newmar one of his customers said why don't they have gas struts to hold that up why is there this stupid metal pole thing well newmar said that's genius we want to be better than everyone else let's do it um the uh 8, generator right here is not on a power extension tray but it is on a gas strut assisted system and it basically totally slid, slid itself out for me i didn't have to put a whole heck of a lot of effort into that um, one last note I'd like to leave you on here before we wrap things up. It's very interesting to me. There is no factory supplied way to get up on the roof of this thing. Um, evidently with those Gerard awnings and just the way that hardware lines up and whatnot, Newmar kind of discourages people from getting up there so they don't accidentally damage something. 
Personally, I think that's a miss. Personally, I like to be able to get up on the roof and check my seals, but chances are, if, if you're buying a Dutch Star, you can probably pay someone to do that for you anyway, right? So guys, let us know what you think about this. Uh, thank Mr. Chris for his time over here. Chris, thank you, buddy. Absolutely, anytime. Man, I, I tell you, um, you, either maybe I need to move to Oregon, you need to move to Michigan, or we gotta move halfway. <laughs> what do you guys think? What should we do here? Because this guy knows his stuff. And that's one of the things I like here, is that uh, we've got people ambitious with uh, a lot of good training, a lot of fun personality, all kinds of different backgrounds. We've got all kinds of people. Someone's gonna work for you just like some coach is gonna work for you. Give us a chance and I think you're gonna like what you see here at Bish's RV. So when you're ready, we're ready. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun. Say thanks to Chris, everyone. Bye. <laughs>